Well, hey there friend it's Sarah here and you're watching my channel Brown Family Goods thanks so much for being here today I have a video to share with you that is cooking on the Blackstone Grill so I'm going to show you uh, three different nights of cooking with the Blackstone Grill and on this first night in particular I had to get the grill cleaned up because the grill has been in the garage for over a month now maybe even like six weeks we have not cooked on the blackstone grill at all because it's been way too hot outside to even enjoy cooking outside so it was nice to get back to it but i did have to give it a good scrub down because the oil had gotten a little bit sticky on there and dust on the surface and everything so cleaned it up first and after i cooked on this night so on this night though i'm cooking some asian style steak skewers and these were so good this is probably my favorite of the three recipes that i'm going to share with you today because they turned out so delicious um, i'm using a beef flank steak is what you see me using there and i actually got the flank steak from my butcher box recently and i like to save the flank steak for something you know really really good <laughs> because you don't get that very often especially not in a butcher box so um, i usually get a butcher box maybe three or four times a year but it's nice to get some different cuts and things that I don't typically buy locally so like this grass-fed um, flank steak so anyway I am I cut the steak into about three quarter or one inch thick strips you know make sure you cut the flank steak on a bias if you're using a flank steak you can use other cuts of steak as well that would be equally delicious but this was so good so cut your steak up on the bias into some strips and then i put some salt and pepper on tossed it around and then i just skewered them up on those metal skewers sort of like an accordion style so folding it back and forth and these this was a really nice way to cook it everything held together really great and i love those metal skewers because Number one, they clean up like a dream. And also, since they're not the wood skewers, you don't have to remember to soak them or do anything special with them to begin with. So now I'm just gonna mix up my super simple sauce that goes on these. This is just gonna be basted onto the meat after it has been flipped for the first time. So I'm using liquid aminos on this night. You can use soy sauce instead or light. Probably I would recommend light soy sauce um, because the hoisin is a little bit salty as well. So liquid aminos, some hoisin sauce, and then I used chili crisp oil and put a little bit extra of that oil in there and they turned out so delicious. So my grill is nice and hot. I actually turned down the right side that I'm not cooking on to low and leave the side that I'm gonna put the meat on on about a medium high temperature. Put down a little bit more oil and then the nice padded dry side of the meat, I put that side down first to begin with and make sure it's in nice contact with the grill and I like to use the weight I like to put the weight on as well to make sure that the meat gets a really really nice sear on it so just leave that on for the first side of cooking These came out just great with the weight pushing down on them. They really got a good hard sear on the first side there. And then after you flip them over for the first time, then you can start basting them with that sauce that you prepared earlier. Just brush on a generous amount of this and know in advance that this is a little bit of a sugary sauce with that hoisin sauce in there and it will tend to burn if your heat is up really really high on your blackstone or grill it could burn a little bit so just be careful about your heat being too high alongside this we're going to just have some jasmine rice 
and a chopped salad, you know, those bags type that comes uh, from your grocery store. So I had an Asian chopped salad on this night and then some plain jasmine rice and this turned out to be such a hit. All right, and we're back for the second night of dinners on the Blackstone. And on this night, we're doing blackened fish tacos. So I didn't end up showing you in the video what fish I use, but I'll tell you. And the recipe that I was looking on called for cod fillets, which would have been divine. But I did a grocery pickup on this day and they ended up substituting flounder fillets, which I do not recommend, but we made it work on this night. But if you can, I would definitely go for cod or another firm white fish like a cod filet because it'll be a lot easier for you to cook up on the Blackstone and a lot easier for you to eat in your tacos ultimately. So that's what I did on this night. I just thawed the filets under refrigeration in my, I just thawed the filets under refrigeration, pulled them out the night before and then on this evening. I just season them up with some blackened seasoning. Anyone will do, or if you want to make your own, I do have a recipe for blackened seasoning on my website, Brown Family Recipes. You can always go there and look at that. And I am making up a little bit of slaw to go on these as well. And then after this slaw, we will make up the mango salsa, which was really the star of the show. So I like to process our slaw down just a little bit. Just makes it so much easier to eat it makes it easier to mix up and everything when it's not so unruly and, and uh, big pieces. So that's what I usually do using my food processor as you saw me. And then I get a little bit carried away on this night with the food processor. And I put the salsa in there too, which I would say I don't recommend. <laughs> I would not process the salsa in the food processor because it all ended up being a little bit too fine for my taste. It was easy to eat on the tacos this way. It still tasted incredible but I would not recommend it because you didn't have, or I didn't have much texture there at all by the time I processed this mango salsa all the way down. Now, it still is delicious. I ate the rest of it the next day with some chips. So I do highly recommend the salsa recipe that I used, and I did put that on my recipe website as well. So go check that out because it was so light and refreshing. It was really, really tasty. You see all the ingredients I'm throwing in here, just some diced Roma tomatoes, some onion, you could use red onion as well, some cilantro. I did not put peppers in here because Alan is not much of a pepper guy, but you could always put either bell peppers if you've got them, or you could put jalapenos if you liked it a little bit more spicy with a little more heat to it. Now, my mango was another problem that I had because my grocery pickup person gave me two options of mangoes one was absolute mush and the next one that you see here that i'm using is not even hardly ripe 
although it still worked out it worked out fine it wasn't as sweet as a nice ripe mango would be but it tasted good either way so I'm just cutting off the bad bits and then do the best you can with a mango is my theory because they're a little bit difficult to cut sometimes <laughs> this one was especially hard so it wasn't like I could scoop it out of the skin or anything like that so I just did the best I could threw it all into the food processor and gave it a few pulses Now the blackstone is nice and hot it's nice and preheated I use a pretty high heat for this uh, fish as well and I'm also going to put down and cook on a piece of parchment paper for this fish this fish is really thin thinner than I would have liked of course but I'm using the parchment paper so that we don't really lose too much to sticking to the actual blackstone itself so you can just you don't have to oil the parchment or anything like that um, I just put down a little bit of oil underneath of the paper so that it would actually stick to the grill. And you see everything cooks up really, really nicely on the parchment paper. I add, add some more seasoning after I put it all on the grill because some of it had kind of been left in the pan there. So I have two pretty good sized pieces of flounder here. I probably would have cooked a third one um, knowing what I know now just because it took a little bit more fish to fill the tacos than I had planned on quite frankly so probably a pound or a pound and a half of fish for six tacos would be more appropriate So just warm the corn tortillas up right at the same time that the fish is cooking so that they can be sitting there staying nice and warm in the little taco holder if you don't have one of these little taco holders this is the first time I've used mine and it was so handy you could kind of prepare everything right there on the blackstone and then just carry that inside dress everything at once my husband and I like different things but if you were dressing a bunch for um, you or your kids you could just do them all right there in the little in the little taco stand and that would be so handy so I piled mine up with the slaw and with that mango salsa and then I ended up adding a little dollop of sour cream to mine as well and this was actually so delicious definitely give that mango salsa a try if you haven't tried that yet Here we are for night number three and tonight we're having hot honey chicken. I'm using chicken thighs and then we're also going to make up some Johnny Cakes. Um, I think some people call them hoe cakes but you know we're on the internet so we'll call them Johnny Cakes tonight. And we're also going to be making up some fried potatoes and a little bit of salad on the side as well. So this will be a good meal and it was so delicious. The hot honey chicken is absolutely a keeper. So you have to check that recipe out for it. It is so simple and so tasty. This is just a gluten-free cornbread that I'm mixing up a small amount of here. So I added an egg, I added a little bit of milk, and I added a little bit of oil. And I'm just gonna mix up about one cup of mix to make a few Johnny Cakes on the griddle while I have it going. So 
uh, those are so delicious you can top them with sweet stuff you can top them with butter whatever you want it's basically just like a cornbread pancake and how can you go wrong with that so I mix up the cornbread mix a little bit earlier than I start dinner and I just threw it back into the refrigerator until I was ready to put it onto the griddle I like to use my cookie scoop here to make sure that everything stays the same exact size, get everything nice and consistent, and then it takes exactly the same amount of time to cook. So all I did was put down a tiny bit of oil on that side of the grill, and then I popped down the Johnny Cakes, and they only take a few minutes per side. I mixed up the ingredients for this hot honey sauce right in my little small cast iron skillet so I could set it onto the black stone while everything was cooking. So after, uh, the, after that I flipped the chicken to the second side, that's when I put the sauce on just to warm through, to bubble up a little bit, and it really comes together quickly. So all it is is butter, um, about a fourth of a cup of honey, and about a fourth of a cup of whatever is your favorite hot sauce. I used. I think I used Texas Pete on this night and it was so delicious. After the chicken was flipped and the Johnny Cakes were taken off, I put a little bit more oil down on the hot side of the grill. I typically do keep a hot side and a cooler side when I'm using the Blackstone or the regular grill and that just makes it easier to control things and set things to one side or the other de depending on what they need. But these are some potatoes that I dry canned recently. I actually have that in another video that's coming out where I dry can potatoes and I can potatoes sort of the more traditional way. I wanted to show you both of those, but this is the dry canned potatoes on this night and we have been enjoying these already. We've made them a couple of times for breakfast and a couple of times for dinners. So they turn out so great. You can put them in the air fryer, you can put them on the Blackstone, you can fry them up right in the skillet and they're just easy to use and really delicious to eat. So now the chicken is done cooking. It's up to temperature. It's, it's good to go. And I'm just putting it into the sauce directly in there. That's what I really love about this recipe. You can just dunk it straight in there, put it back onto the grill to get a little bit more sear to it. Once you have that honey on there though, be sure that your grill is turned down to a pretty moderate temperature. Otherwise the honey will burn really, really fast. If your temperature is still up pretty high, you'll want to cut it down once you get the honey chicken back onto the grill. And that has got this meal just about done. It is going to come together so quickly once everything is off the Blackstone Grill. So I hope you have enjoyed all of these Blackstone recipes. Let me know if you like cooking on your Blackstone Grill or if you're thinking about getting one, maybe now's the time. Thanks again for being here and I will see you back here real soon.